Good afternoon, folks. It's Tuesday, May the 19th, 2015. We're here at 6 p.m. at City Hall, 116 West Bridge Street, Granbury, Texas. The Granbury City Council regular meeting is now called to order. I'd like to call upon Reverend Drew Travis, pastor of the First Presbyterian Church, to lead us in our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge, led by Councilperson Rose Myers. All rise, please. <coughs> Let us pray. Gracious God of gifts and of creation, we give you thanks this night as we gather. We thank you for the marvels of your world. We thank you for rain that fills lakes and reminds us of your life giving. God, we thank you for opportunities that we have in this community and in this nation. For those that serve this town and give of their time and their talents and their strengths to remind us that community is made when folks care for one another when folks do what is necessary, that all are supported. God, make us the community you call us to be. God, we do pray your presence be here this night, that your wisdom might be upon this council, that those that gather here might see the activities of this council in light of the community that we wish to have. And God, as we come forward in this week to the day of memorial, when we remember those that have given so much that we might have the freedoms of liberty and the opportunities that we have in this nation. We do give you thanks for their sacrifice. We give you thanks for their courage and pray that we might live up well to what they have done on our behalf. God, gather us together, make your presence known. We pray in all good thanksgiving. Amen. Please join me in honoring our United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texans, one state under God, one and indivisible. At this time, I'd like to read a proclamation based off of the National Public Work Week from May the 17th to May the 23rd, 2015, and how appropriate it is because of uh, all the activities we've had with our public work people and all the storms, the wind, the rain, and everything else we've had. They've, they've been working, some of them, 24-7. So uh, we do appreciate everything they've done for the community. When you look around the community, they've done a lot of cleanup. They've done a lot of work, so we appreciate everything that they the, the folks out there have done. The official proclamation reads, whereas public works infrastructure, facilities and service are vital importance to the health, safety, and the well-being of the people of this community. And whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works, systems and programs such as water, sewer, stormwater management, street and highways, public buildings, public grounds, parks, and solid waste collections and waste processing, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction is vital, dependent upon the efforts and the skills of public works personnel, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and the dedicated personnel who staff public works departments and offices is materially influenced by the people's attitude and the understanding of the importance of the work that they perform. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Nin Hewlett, the mayor of the city of Granbury, do hereby proclaim the week of May 15th through the 21st, 2015 as National Public Works Week. In the city of Granbury, I call upon all the citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public work officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and the quality of life. If I could get the uh, public work people to gather up here, we'll get a photograph. All right. Don't be shy. <laughs> it's 
this lady named Chris, and about a dozen of them will answer to you. There's more Chris's in this organization <laughs> than you take a stick at. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies up front. At this time, we'll move into the deliberation agenda. The first item being, uh, we're gonna be hearing an engineering report and consider the possible action related to any necessary repairs to the disaster area of the South Morgan Street from the May 9th, 2015 washout. I'd like to call upon Keith Kendall. Hey, here, council members. For the record, my name is Keith Kendall with Improtec Hips and Todd, 2901 Glen Rose Highway, Granbury, Texas. Uh, we prepared a presentation. This was done uh, in coordination with Alva Cox, the Public Works Director. And you'll bear with me. Some of these graphics are kind of hard to see, but what I want to show you at the very start is before the affected area, all the different utilities we've had. The green line that you see coming across uh, there is where they called the drainage pipe that it basically connects to Lander's Ditch, as we refer to it. And then also the various lines or sanitary sewer lines and water lines uh, that are identified throughout. So the little hatched area that you see, this kind of a circle is the washout area that we had. And so as I was sitting in church and got a call from Alva uh, at 10 a.m. Mother's Day morning, this is what we were looking at and, and all of the people that responded to it. And I wanna note that, you know, Basically, what you're seeing there is the lift station that's in the middle of that hole, uh, everything washed out beneath it, uh, and the dirt gone. So what happened? Well, what happened is underneath that lift station number four, there's a seven-foot diameter corrugated metal pipe, and it basically suffered a catastrophic failure. Uh, what we believe happened, and, and we will never know for sure because all the evidence is washed downstream. Uh, but what we've been able to find at the failure points is that it looked like the soil became saturated with the heavy rains uh, in combination with a pipe carrying a large amount of rainfall with that. <coughs> the joint basically failed. This is a 50-year-old pipe that is there. And we were able to find the failure point, and I'll show you a couple of pictures here in a little bit. But when that failed, because the soil was saturated, because you had such a large amount of water in a seven-foot diameter pipe, it basically washed everything out. So underneath lift station four, and you just had that catastrophic failure, basically everything collapsed and washed out. Now, how is that different from a sinkhole? Well, a sinkhole is a geologic cause. There is usually something under the soils that has caused that, not a drainage failure, not a pipe failing underneath. That is usually the soils giving away because of some geologic feature or characteristic of the soils underneath. So this was not a sinkhole. It is basically a washout that occurred due to the failure of the pipe. This is the drainage structure. That's what we've tried to show only. It comes from Landers Creek, and in the little circle you see is the, the drainage area there. I'm sorry it doesn't show on that screen too much of the red dot, but uh, it basically shows the alignment of that corrugated metal pipe as it goes under the Brookshire's parking lot. That's looking at the plan view, and what I want you to appreciate, and I know this is a little difficult, but here's the profile of the pipe. Starting at Landers Creek, it's 22 feet below ground. At a point area that the failed, we were right at 33 feet below ground. 
So the lift station four was on top of that, and when that failed at that little dotted line that you see where we call the washout point, that is where everything then uh, just proceeded to wash away and sink down. Now we were trying to find where that derived from, and, and this is the oldest dedication found. It goes back to 1934, and basically it's what is called Deep Branch. Uh, Highway 1 and 44 is the line that is going across right here. Deep Branch is this Brazos River, and this was basically what is alleged, we've been told, is that corrugated metal pipe was put in the creek that runs along to the river in 1965 before the lake was established in 1968. Uh, and then basically filled over as, as they went forward from that point. We've got some pictures of the condition inside. This is the blocked area of the pipe at the failure. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of pipe or joint left. Uh, the, the soil has caved in. And for a 50-year-old pipe, as you would expect, uh, a lot of the bottom of the pipe has already rusted away. Uh, from keeping just the water in there and, and over the years if you've done any snow and ice control measures any salt that's washed off the road is collected in that pipe as well. So since Mother's Day what have we done? Well the city has issued a seven-day emergency declaration uh, on May the 10th it was subsequently reissued on May the 17th. I do want and I can't it's appropriate that we've had Public Works Appreciation Day because the city did a great great job on plugging the lines that were active, that were carrying the sewer, and bypassing that as quickly as they possibly could, and also implementing where the water line was broke of bypassing that and bringing it around. <laughs> so really can't say enough about how quickly that was done and how well they responded to that. The affected area has been <coughs> fenced. The access has been controlled. The city mobilized the contractor, Scott Tucker, as a general contractor and Kick and A as a subcontractor. Both of those have been mobilized and have been on site working. Uh, before we had the rains, uh, <laughs> right after Mother's Day, we were able to uncover the point of that pipe and look at the failure points and at least think what we believe happened. Uh, because seven feet of, of diameter pipe uh, failing the way it did and what we were able to uncover will wash out a lot of soil underneath as it goes forward, with, especially with the rains that we have had. Uh, we're continuing to do daily meetings with the contractor uh, and the city. In addition to that, the city has identified other potential funding, possibly uh, through the declaration of emergency, some potential state funds or emergency and or potential TxDOT uh, cost sharing. We're not, that's still to be determined, but it's continued to be explored. So where are we at currently? Uh, temporary construction easements have already been provided to the city and is going to the landowners for signature. We have stabilized the site. Uh, we've done some benching back to the site, and I'll show that in the pictures later, uh, so that we can make sure we control any future cave-ins of the site. Uh, we have also actively engaged in trying to get the erosion control measures at the end of the channel before the lake. Unfortunately, it's one of those that it is a special order. It's called a silk curtain that will run across the channel. It's coming from Florida. The contractor has ordered it. We're hoping to have it in by Friday of this week. Uh, at the meantime, with not raining lately, we're beginning to mobilize to get more of the dirt off the road that is behind the lift station site in Brookshire's and to dispose of it on other appropriate sites so that we can continue to control the erosion by basically removing the dirt that is there. Another item that has been done since Mother's Day is an alternative lift station site's been approved. We've also completed the design of the lift station pumps and the wet well. We've done a video assessment of that corrugated metal pipe uh, including to the point of failure. And, and the reason we did that is in situ lining is one of those that can be a, it's basically lining an old pipe and making it brand new again. We wanted to look at the possibility of doing that uh, for this drainage pipe. I can tell you we don't have a, a determination from an in situ, but based on the video that I have seen of the pipe, uh, the corrosion that has occurred, all the failure points in the pipe, I don't think lining is going to be uh, an option for that. I think it'll have to be replaced all the way starting at 144 and coming down. Now it will be able to take a shallower grade than what it currently is where we hopefully get daylight instead of going all the way to the lake like the pipe currently does. Uh, but I don't think lining is going to be feasible. We have also uh, mobilized geotechnical investigations. Those are underway. It's important that we characterize the soils, both what is left from the washout at the bottom 
in addition to the areas around the wall and where we're putting the wet well uh, for the lift station. Uh, structural design will begin after the geotechnical. This is a picture of the bypass pumps, and this is one of the reasons we want to get the lift station started as soon as possible. Uh, the city, these pumps have to be maintained 24 hours a day. It is carrying all the sewer that services that area. Uh, those pumps are, are quite expensive to continue to maintain and operate. That's what we want to get rid of as soon as possible by building a new lift station and, and relieving what the city crews and everybody is having to keep up with of maintaining the bypass of the wastewater. So I just wanted to show you what that looked like. So cost to date. Uh, of what happened last week. The contractor has provided the cost of about 65000 The engineering and surveying has been 12000 I kind of feel like a pauper after looking at all of the different costs that we have here. And then the city uh, has spent a lot of resources, about 108000 for a total of $185,000 to date, responding uh, to this disaster that has occurred. And I do want to note that there's been over 1,000 man hours, including 400 hours of overtime by the city, and those are the hardworking folks of the Public Works Department we just honored. So what are the project elements? One of the things that had to occur for the city to uh, respond back to their insurers and other parties that are associated with this is what is the preliminary cost? Well, the elements of that project include the lift station replacement. We've got three gravity lines that are affected, a force main. By force main, that is a sewer line as well, but it's pumped under pressure. Uh, we can't gravity everything because you eventually get too deep, so then we've got to lift it back up and pump it, and that's what a force main is. We also have one water line that's been affected. Uh, there is the placement of the drainage structure that has failed. There's a retaining wall, the backfill of the hole, and I will tell you, we've, we've been surveying that uh, quite a bit, and thus far there's about 3,000 cubic yards if you have to fill that hole back in at this point. If you think of one uh, concrete truck that's eight cubic yards, that's a little over 350 trucks coming in there and empty uh, in the hole that is gone right now. There's also the surface mitigation. Uh, that includes getting the asphalt and the pavement and everything back and all of the striping and features associated with the parking lot and, and all of the elements that were there before the washout. The preliminary cost estimate for all of those different project elements was about 3.12, and I say preliminary with an emphasis on that. A lot of assumptions that went into that are just not known at this time, but we need to come up with an estimate uh, based on our best judgment and based on what is known right now, and that's what we've done at this point. It's probably a little high because when you don't know enough, you assume the worst case. So that's what we've done in this estimate is assume replacing all of the pipe all the way to the lake, you know, the, the, the most expensive retaining wall that, that is out there and a host of other things, because we don't know the elements as we go forward of what's going to be replaced and how and what. So. What we're here tonight, we wanted to make sure we focus on is there is a proposed lift station site to get it out of the hole. The affected area, this is, you can't really see the hole, but we're out of that and what we're moving it behind is if you come into the light and you turn left, you've got, you're coming by the fuel pump station and you're going back around. Well, the lift station gets out of that hole as we proposed and we have prepared both the construction easements and the uh, permanent easements for that lift station. I apologize that a lot of the red text is just flow line elevations and the rim elevations of the proposed manhole, so it's really not important. But the green lines that you see are both the manholes and the proposed sewer line, uh, rewriting that around and then taking the force main and connecting it back. And just FYI, the, where that lift station pumps, it serves the entire 144 area, and it pumps basically up to the bridge at 377 and then down 377 to empty out at Waterside uh, through a 12-inch force main. So that's what this would be doing the same way. We'll be pump connecting back to the 12-inch force main. I think it go back the way that it was before. The cost of the preliminary cost estimate for that lift station, uh, the wet well pumps and control panel, we've uh, broken that out because the city go ahead and pay for that instead of having to pay for any adder via the contractor. Uh, including the electrical services. And when I say electrical services, that is the city <coughs> extending electrical service to the lift station side, including a board to get the electrical service there, uh, basically setting it up from the meter, and that's it. The contractor will be responsible for all the secondary electrical after that. The SCADA is a system <coughs> control and data acquisition. That's what that stands for. That is basically the remote monitoring of the lift station site that they're able to do to look at the flow when the pumps are on 
Is there a high level alarm going on? Uh, you know, is there anything wrong with the pumps? That allows them to remotely monitor that site and to also be, receive alarms that the site is not functioning correctly. The contractor installation is a quote we have gotten today, the engineering, and then I've added a contingency of 10% just off the contractor's installation because there are some items that are not known uh, at this point. We plan to have plans and specs at the end of this week, but yeah, we have rapidly <coughs> moved through getting them a plan view for them to do their estimate on, and we basically finalized this site yesterday afternoon. So there's been a lot of work going on uh, since Mother's Day weekend to get, get to where we are today. So what are the remaining issues? Well, any potential for TxDOT funding for the drainage replacement, uh, potential for any state emergency funds to help with the cost if it's determined that there's going to be something done on the drainage features and the uh, backfill. What cost sharing, if any, uh, and then related to that, all of that is the design of the drainage replacement uh, permitting because if we're going to basically daylight and not carry the pipe all the way to the lake as it currently is, uh, which will need to be done, quite frankly, if we went to the lake or we daylight out, and by daylight I mean we're coming out of the ground, because right now the pipe goes underground all the way to the lake. And that, I guarantee that pipe is full of silt and everything else, <laughs> and it's probably filled in several places <laughs> too. By daylighting, I mean coming out of the ground and able to go ahead and release the drainage water, you know, with the landowner's approval, it went into a channel and not go all the way to the lake. If we do that, there's always going to be some permitting involved with that with BRA and the core too, that we would need to do. And then the last part is the design of the retaining wall and the backfill. This is the site of it last Monday. It's been cleaned up. You see some of the areas that are benched back. Uh, then it, yeah, I appreciate the, the public's patience of trying to route the traffic around. Uh, just I uh, hope that, you know, your patience also looking at this presentation. I hope that we've explained adequately at least what we believe the cause was. Uh, we have definitively been able to see that the pipe failed and where it failed. And based on elevation shots, we noted that where it failed is actually a foot below the current lake level right now, which means that added possibly to the, the saturated soil because if the lake was up before the last rains that we had, that means lake water finds its own level. So it went all the way up to that pipe and as corroded as that pipe is on the bottom, it was leaking down in the bottom, saturating the soils underneath lift station four add the rains coming in through the seven foot diameter pipe to that and the pipe failing, that's how you come to your catastrophic failure. Right, so be glad to answer any questions that you have at this time. Mayor, I have a couple. Councilman Allen. First, I'm gonna add a little bit to Mayor that you were talking about our employees and I guarantee you, Mother's Day, they were out there in the rain working and as council, I want to thank each one of them too because they didn't complain. They loaded, unload sand. Everybody really busted. Also, uh, I want to comment on our mayor pro tem, uh, Mayor Hewlett was out of town, and that happens occasionally. And he took over whenever Mayor Pratt went down, and and uh, Nan didn't go. I mean, Mayor didn't go down. He just wasn't in town that day. His wife had him on a Mother's Day, but. Uh, Anyway, I got the call or text about 9 o'clock that morning, and, and I got out there, Rose came out, Miss Myers, Council Myers, and then <coughs> our mayor pro tem, Mickey Parsons, showed up, and he took over and uh, did a great job, uh, Mr. Parsons. Thank you. Great job. And uh, he got our engineers involved. Thank you all for coming out on Mother's Day. You were there until late that afternoon. Uh, Bill Scott with Scott Tucker was there. Uh, these are people that work just like the rest of us, but they got a heart, and uh, thank you for that very much. Rose, I gotta say thank Miss Myers for bringing us pizza, <laughs> and then she got one up on us and brought chicken the next day, but I didn't get invited. <laughs> and uh, Laurel was there, got out there, and he was at our meeting, and Councilman Couch was in Nebraska where it's snowing. But uh, he called me about every 30 minutes, and finally I texted him and said, if there's anything changed, I'll, I'll get back with you, Gary. Because <laughs> he, was, he was wanting to know what was going on and wanting to stay on top of it, because he couldn't get in. So I do thank the council for being involved on that Mother's Day. <coughs> Save me money, I didn't have to take my wife out for Mother's Day. Okay, text not, you're talking about the line, I know <coughs> we talked a little bit about it off of the, way from here. Do you know what percent 
that might be it they would pay on that uh, off that 3.2 million uh, yeah that is that's my understanding as in talking with Mr. Kaufman that that's that's being run up the flagpole within it because you know what we what we currently have is the the pipe is there it doesn't belong to the city there's not a dedicated easement uh, at all that we can see for the corrugated metal pipe we went all the way back to 1934 you know allegedly it was put in in 1965 and you know who what when and where I don't I don't know that but I do know that it it is tied on by TxDOT as the work they did in the 2003 on the 144 and their drainage structure empties into that pipe <coughs> as as does Landers did as well but as far as what percent share or anything I, you know that they're going to have to determine that when you say they you talking about TxDOT yes sir okay all right the other question was was uh, time schedule get Sorry. done what what's your schedule on getting it complete the the lift station we hope it can go pretty quickly the uh, the pumps are actually off the shelf so we expect to have those within a week uh, to it may be 15 days on the pumps but the wet well itself in about five days uh, with that I, I will work with the contractor but we're hoping that the lift station we can have pretty much substantially complete in the next 30 days after that, you know, with, with direction that the council gives us of what you want to do on the drainage structure and, and the retaining wall and the backfill at that point. What we are focusing on right now and asking for approval to move forward with is the lift station so we can eliminate the bypass that is currently being done 24-7 uh, right now. And, and the lift station, getting it out of the hole, I can't tell you how important that <coughs> is uh, for us because then we don't have to worry about concurrently doing the retaining wall, the backfill, and the lift station all at the same site. Mm -hmm. This allows us to get it out of that site and concentrate on getting that lift station going as quickly as possible. Alrighty. And the last question, I guess, goes to Mr. Cox. I know when we did a deal <coughs> with Knox Ranch, that was part of the agreement with them is whenever they got a certain size that we'd have to upgrade this anyway and we knew that yes, sir. have you talked to anybody or anybody with the city talk to them about maybe it's cheaper for them to get involved now than later uh, we did talk to Justin Oswald with Friesen Nichols did contact him about it but uh, I don't think at this time they haven't they haven't said one way or the other but Justin did actually contact him I actually contacted Justin and said hey bring it up see if it's a if it's something there and he did talk to him but nothing came out of it if, if we were going to do that or, or if Knox Ranch was going to say we want to pay for upgrading five years from now, yes. how would we'd have to dig that up and redo it or how do you do that? Um, technically, you'd have to look at, there's different things that you look at. You look at the pump curves. You could actually come in with larger pumping possible depending. We're, we're actually going in with a little bit deeper wet well so we'll have a little bit more uh, volume and then actually the pumps are a little bit bigger than what we had before as well um, so that that'll you know but to answer your question just basically we could either a trim impellers B we could look at uh, bigger pumps and so forth and you could do it that way that'd be something we might have to look at on this end of it before we did it to make sure we could drop another pump in or something yeah that the other item that we can do is just leave another space for a pump to come in and, right. and do the manifold and, and future piping and just plans that off for right now uh, because we're going to a 10 by 25 wet well that's going to be fairly adequate for anything in addition they come on to for a little while so Correct. we if if need be if the city desires we can go back and revise that design to make sure we leave it doesn't cost a whole lot quite frankly to leave one more space for a pump in the future to come in and, and do the manifold and extend for one more piping if we need Okay, I just wanted to ask yeah, that. But it was a pro. Where are we getting the money to do this at? You asking me? Mm -hmm. Chris? Um, First week on the job. <laughs> I can tell you that uh, Texas Municipal League, our, our uh, self-insured type arrangement has been to the site, and they're evaluating the claim. We do have replacement cost insurance on the lift station and uh, the infrastructure associated with that. It's still to be determined exactly what they will pay on the remediation mitigation that we've done. So uh, um, we're going to have to go that route. And obviously, if we have to take funds 
out of the city coffers. It will come out of the utility funds. And uh, I anticipate we'll need to probably pay the contractor before we get our insurance check. But uh, we need to move forward to cut the cost because it's expensive to rent those pumps and keep somebody stationed there 24-7. The, the cost of the, the drainage structure, Can't answer that question yet. They're content, they're contemplating whether they want to cover that or not. So they've got it in their legal department. Do we have 3.2 in our utility fund? No, sir. In fact, uh, I talked to TxDOT today, and and if if they come up with a cost share arrangement, they anticipate making the storm drainage structure a lot. Uh, shallower than it is now and so then they would they would propose to bid that on an emergency basis which would take about 30 days after they make their mind up and, and y'all meet and discuss and dis determine if that's something that y'all want to partner with them uh, but they're anticipating the cost to be somewhere around uh, half a million to a million dollars to put in that storm structure and they're still not talking about filling in the hole so uh, we'll have to see what they come up with and they'll work with Hibbs and Todd on the engineering <coughs> of that as well so <coughs> all won't be lost of what they're already looked at so but they're talking about going back with a seven by seven square culvert like we have there now and uh, that'll haul more water than the the round culvert that's existing there so but they're not they're not committed to it uh, it's in Austin being talked about in Fort Worth with the right away folks so yeah, how about the, uh, I thought Hood County was under disaster. We are under a disaster and got a consultant on item three to talk to us about possible options to be able to get some funding assistance that way. So it, it's really undetermined at this time. But I guess, I guess my question is, we've got to go forward with what we got here. We need to move forward to put in a lift station. I think, Council, on this on this particular item here, I mean, in the form of a motion, we would probably be uh, asking to uh, approve the, uh, the the purchase of a lift station, obviously, and to and the installation, <clears throat> and also in, a, in a, an agreement with an engineering firm <clears throat> of Hibbs and Todd, excuse me, and also probably acquire the proper easements, and that would be all we'd be doing at this time right now. There's a lot of things we've talked about going forward, and we'll and surely we'll be entering into that. And also with this uh, agreement here, that gets the ball rolling. We get out of the, uh, the uh, process of manually pumping the station and, and all the personnel that we have out there also working this thing. So that definitely has to be done first. Would, would you agree, the, Chris? Was yes. that the 385 mayor? Or Pardon? 385, 375? Yes, yeah, something like that. I have a question. Council Person Meyer. I just want clarification. Now the lift station is insured, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, I believe it is. They haven't ruled on it final, but we do have it itemized <coughs> on our insurance policy mm -hmm. with a recovery of replacement cost value attached. Which is roughly three hundred and fifty, four hundred thousand, correct? Yes, ma'am. And that's what we have to fix now. Um Alba, I believe you talked about um, one of the times at the site that you were able to salvage some of the pumps from the lift station. Is that going to be something that's going to be, I noticed you, you said that we're going to get something larger. Yes. Perhaps it's not gonna be interchangeable. So is that something that we're not able to do now? Yes, ma'am, uh, we did salvage both pumps. Uh, we actually, there are 15 horsepower pumps that we salvaged and we've already pulled them out and shipped them over to another lift station. Um, as far as in the ones that we're looking at are 20 horse right now, so they wouldn't fit into that one as far as on those. So those are basically for other lift stations, not the one that we're gonna put in this one? Yes, sir, okay. yes, but we did salvage them. We were able to get them out. Okay, and then I needed to wrap my head over around, we're going to fill this hole back up with the dirt we took out, correct? Uh, no, ma'am. No? No. So we can't put that dirt somewhere and bring it back? To, to save any kind of fun? Uh, the, the, the structure is, or the hole is, the soil that washed out has been completely destroyed as far as structure-wise. I would not put that, try to put that back in there. What's going to have to be done is 
some type of geo grid and probably a flowable field and then lifts of select fill by select fill. We're talking about graded dirt and then compacted to 95% and a retaining wall that goes along with that. That we're basically trying to dispose of the soil that is washed out and been piled up around the, the channel as quickly as we can. And that that we can't get rid of doing some erosion control measures to we just keep the rain off us and we can get most of that dirt out of there. But it's just <laughs> been so wet, we can't haul the dirt off, not because it's wet at the site, but because we can't get into any other sites to dispose of the dirt. Uh, trucks get stuck, they tear up everything trying to get to the site to, to dispose of the dirt, so we just haven't been able to do that. If we can keep the rain off of us a little bit, we'll get most of that cleaned out. But I, trying to use what has been washed out, uh, I would not recommend that because you're not going to get a compaction uh, that you want. Secondly, because I mentioned flowable fill, because it's so deep, uh, normally when we put in soil and try to compact it, it's done in one foot lifts. We're already at 35 feet. We, we would be there forever trying to do that. So we're going to be doing some aggregate mixed sand and other type of material based on the geotechnical analysis to fill that hole back up if the city decides to to take that on with the retaining wall within it. But all we're wanting to do tonight, or at least get your approval for, is move forward with the lift station and, and get that moving in addition to uh, presenting to the owners there the uh, permanent easements for the new lift station site. Uh, and the way that is written will also be decommissioning or, or giving away the easement side of the existing lift station because we no longer need that anymore. So we'll be returning that part of the parking lot back to them whenever it's restored. Okay, so we don't own the storm, it's the storm drain, right? The city does not own that drain. But, and we don't own the property that the actual sinkhole is in, is that correct? That's correct. The only thing the city has there is the easement for the lift station site and the easements for the wastewater and the water lines that ran across that. There is no dedicated easement for the drainage pipe that is there. But we have to pay the $3 million to get it all fixed? Well, it's, it's 375000 for the lift station. No, I mean the total project. Yeah. Yep. We I was saying you have to pay for that. Let, let, let Chris go ahead and talk a little bit about that one, Chris. I, I think it's important for us just to kind of review what we just saw. Uh, basically, what we had was an emergency disaster where the, the washout caused our lift station to collapse. <laughs> As part of cleaning up our lift station, we needed to get down to that <coughs> pipe so that, as you saw in the picture, there was a concrete block that had blocked that pipe. We needed to unclog that so the water would continue to flow in the future rains so it wouldn't flood the highway. And also, we had to bench, as you can see in the picture, the, the side walls of that so that it wouldn't collapse with fur further erosion. So what we've basically done is we've mitigated the site to make it relatively safe. And, and now then, all we're wanting to do is, is address our lift station and give us more time to work with TxDOT and the property owner or whoever to figure out what we're going to do with the remaining mess. So under the emergency disaster, we're able to move forward, uh, procure the, the equipment that's been uh, designed and scoped, and move forward quickly to get that installed with contractors we've already been engaged with. Thank you. Council, any more questions for? Uh, uh, I'm, ass I'm assuming that the plans include uh, making sure we don't have to redo anything if and when that seven foot square pipe is installed. If we looked at the r routing of the, of the uh, drainage. We, you know, if we're asked, <coughs> if we address the drainage, yeah, we'll be trying to reroute it as much as we can, as shallow as we can. The, it's not going to be as shallow as you would think because one of the comments I made when I was showing you the profile that's very, very important to note is beginning at 144 is 22 feet <coughs> below the ground. Mm -hmm. You can't go higher than that coming out. So we're still going to be at least 22 to 25 feet below ground uh, as you go forward with any kind of covert box uh, to daylight out. But it certainly is a lot more efficient and, and a lot better than the 35 foot to 43 depth uh, that it is right now. And your, your wet well will be at uh, the top of it, be at grade level, or will it be above the ground? That's what we're hoping, yes, sir. 
So we don't you need our authorization in, in, in authorizing the, the expenditure of dollars. We also need to authorize the uh, the exchange of the easement. Right. Uh, if just to authorize the going forward with the lift station and the uh, permanent and going forward with the permanent easements for the new lift station, that'll take care right. of both the authorization and deauthorization costs. So. He, yes, sir. On, on what Council Parsons is saying is though, like if you move this over to it towards the easement. In other words, bring the easement back towards 144 to put it to install. Then, are you further enough back at the the eight inch or eight foot pipe? It runs off 144. It, it's good there underneath of it. Yes, so we don't have to worry about that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we are not. <laughs> That's one of the things we battled a lot. This this lift station site wasn't finalized till about three o'clock yesterday afternoon because every time we moved it around in the parking lot, we would do another utility locate to find out what was underneath it. And we either had electrical or we had uh, some of the communication and the cash flow that comes back and forth between the fuel station and Brookshire's on the last site. But the bottom line is yes, we are away from any proposed drainage structure that would go in there. Uh, and that's, that's what I, if you, uh, I could go back to that slide if we need to, but basically we're, we're as far away from it as we can get and still make grade because these pipes come in by gravity, so there's only so much leeway I have of moving that lift station in that parking lot. I can't move it way away because it, gravity flow continues to have to go downhill. I can't move the lift station away back uphill and expect it to flow. Then we're going to have to have another lift station to pump it up. So that's what, we, that's what we've been struggling with over the last week, and I really have to credit uh, Chris Hay in, in my shop. He has spent a lot of sleepless nights trying to, to get this done and to be able to, to finally de decide where we're going to put it yesterday afternoon and to have an estimate for you tonight is, is pretty incredible in my opinion. So my hat's off to both the contractor and Chris and all of our staff of what they've been able to do at this point. To answer your question in a very long manner, yes, we are away from the drainage. So if we proved tonight the 375, Plus the easement, that's all you need. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Council, any more <coughs> any questions or concerns? Thank you, Keith. Yeah. So at this time, I'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Let me see if I can. I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchase of the lift station and the installation and an engineering agreement with Hibbs and Todd, the engineering firm, and also acquire the proper easements as necessary. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Couch. I'll second. I have a second by Councilman Perkle. Are there any more discussions on this council? Do we want to cap at it 375 or, or not? That was an estimate anyway, I think. Um, and all we're proving, uh, all we're, the motion is just the purchase, which we have to, we've already got that in line, purchase, in, in, which was in that figure, and the installation of it rest of that probably won't have a dollar amount to it yeah my preference isn't to um tie it to a specific amount um it sounds like our insurance is going to take care of this so right <clears throat> any more discussion councilman allen how do you vote yay councilman parson aye councilman couch aye councilman perkle Aye. Councilperson Myers. Aye. That motion is approved. Council, I apologize. I'm going to, I got ahead of myself here. I'm going to go back to the consent agenda real quick here. And the consent agenda was to consider approving council meeting minutes of May the 5th, 2015, our regular meeting, and our May 10th, 2015 emergency meeting. And also, number two, to consider approving the closing of one block of Bridge Street between Houston and Crockett and one block of Crockett Street between Bridge and Pearl from 5 p.m. July the 2nd to, 9th, to the 9th p.m. July the 5th, and a section of Crawford Street behind the old Kroger for the fireworks staging from 8 to 11 p.m. July the 4th for the purpose of the old-fashioned 4th of July celebration presented by the Granbury Chamber of Commerce. So, Council, you had a chance to look at the minutes and also look at this item number two. Is there any discussion on these items? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. I got a motion by Councilman Allen. Second. I got a second by Councilman Parsons. 
Are there any more discussion, Council? Councilman Parson, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen? Aye. Councilman Perkle? Aye. Councilman Couch? Aye. Councilperson Myers? Aye. The consent agenda is approved. Now we will go back to the deliberation agenda. Item number four, consider approving action regarding setting a date for a debriefing on the emergency response of the May 10th, 2015 disaster declaration. And I'll call upon our city manager, Chris Kaufman, to talk a little bit about that, please. You bet, I just wanted to um, have us gather together as a workshop or round table discussion to discuss uh, our response and our uh, reaction to the disaster. And I thought it would be good to set a date uh, in the future to have everybody in agreement to gather and uh, talk about it. There's there's all kinds of stuff that we need to probably uh, acknowledge that were accomplished right, and there's probably some room for improvement. And also, I'd like to have our emergency management coordinator participate in that meeting as well. And um, so, at this time, I would just solicit a date from y'all that y'all would feel comfortable for one more meeting. Well, count. Uh, uh Chris, if the uh, council's okay with it, if you've uh, got some dates set up, I would, I would say go forward with a, a date of, uh, in the future here and set that date for the council and uh, see what Is dates it, were available. Well, I was uh, thinking the first week in June, uh, a particular date. Um, we have a council meeting on the second, so uh, probably this exercise shouldn't take more than uh, 45 minutes to an hour is Wednesday the 3rd a possible date for you? Uh, I know some of you travel and wouldn't be able to come early to a council meeting on the 2nd, so I'd kind of like to wipe out that as an option. And then the uh, the next week, maybe on a, a Monday night the 8th, or the following week, Monday the 15th. Do any of those work for y'all? I'm gonna be going the week of 17th, so any time by the data. Okay. Leave on the twelfth or third or the eighth. Does that help anybody? I'll be here both of the I can do the eighth. The third is another um, board meeting for the DMO. Oh, okay. I could certainly do it prior to that at five thirty. If it's if it's or five. I can do five on the third if that works or any time on the 8th. Chris, what, what time of day was you talking about having this? I guess in the evening. Evening? Wow, everybody. You want it evening or I could do 8 in the morning. Hey, that works too. Either one of those dates, but at 8 a.m. These guys, I don't know. How does that affect y'all? <laughs> on a Monday? Uh, Monday or that Wednesday the 3rd. Wednesday, Monday the 8th or Wednesday's my preference. Wednesday? What does that do for everybody else? Or there's a chance that we could um, do it before a council meeting, if that is an option. I can do. I prefer, I prefer before council meeting on the second, be my mm -hmm. preference. Five o'clock or whatever that is. That work for everybody? That works for everybody, I think. Everybody I know there knows. there is a conflict with a potential candidate for or a candidate for state representative that is on that night and oh, he is going second. to be asking the council to attend um, June 2nd there is going to be a reception for a candidate for state representative that night that starts at 4 30. Uh, I mean I can still we just none of us would be able to attend that if if invited Wednesday the third I guess back to Wednesday the third council is everybody okay with Wednesday the third uh, give me a time Chris morning at, at 8 or would you prefer at 5 30 p.m. 5 30 works that's yeah. for me Wednesday the third 5 30 Rose, does that work for you? Works for me. Council? Works for you? No, can we? No, that's good. 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have we'll have a debriefing on Wednesday the third at five thirty, and then we'll um, I will confirm with our emergency management coordinator, and I think it's important for him to be here, and also uh, staff. I think that won't be a problem for staff. Okay. Thank you all. all right, there's no action request. We'll put that together and get it out to the council. Thank you, Chris. Our next item is to consider possible action in response to a representation to be made by, I'm sorry, for a presentation to be made by Jake McAdams of the Public Management Corporation regarding grant funding opportunities for the city of Granbury in relation to planning and cap capacity of infrastructure of the city. Uh, Jake, you want to? Address to council about that, please. Mayor and Council, it's a, well, a pleasure to meet you tonight. I am Jake McAdams with Public Management Incorporated. Uh, well, I want to begin by saying that, that my wife and I just moved to Granbury at the end of February, and, and so far we are <coughs> thoroughly enjoying it and, and looking forward to being part of this community. Uh, well, public management is a grant administration and planning firm based out of Cleveland, Texas, which is just north of Houston. And uh, we've been uh, around in the business since the mid-1980s, uh, working on various projects throughout the years. Although we are uh, based out of the Houston area is the primary office, we do have about half of our clients, about 40 to 50 in the Metroplex area. Uh, just, just right here around Granbury Close, some of them are Springtown. Uh, we also work with Stephenville, uh, Grandview. We've worked with Parker County in the past. And so we are familiar with this area and, and do quite a bit of work here. What exactly uh, it is that we do, uh, we work with various cities and counties as, as well as uh, engineers, we've, we've actually done quite a bit of work with EHT. Uh, I'm working with them on several projects right now. But we work with the cities on different uh, grant funding opportunities uh, to get funding and then work and, and help administer those projects, make sure that, that everything is done accordingly. The majority of our projects are for infrastructure grants. Uh, primarily through the Texas Community Development Block Grant Fund. Some of y'all might be familiar with that. Uh, that is administered by the Texas Department of Agriculture. The primary infrastructure uh, grants are currently on a two-year cycle, uh, and those are typically about two, $275,000 to do primarily water and sewage improvements, also street and drainage improvements in the city. Um, another grant funding opportunity, as, as Mr. Kaufman uh, has mentioned and put up there, is the planning and capacity building uh, grant. This is also through the Department of Agriculture, and it's on an annual cycle, and uh, this is grant funds to do a comprehensive <laughs> plan of the city. Uh, that includes all the uh, water, sewage, streets, uh, capital improvements plan, there's a uh, economic development uh, plan, you can do a parks plan, there's, there's various different uh, <coughs> planning components in this comprehensive plan. I'm, I'm sure y'all are all familiar uh, with that, but there is funding available uh, for that to help ease that with the city. Uh, we also work with disaster funds, as, as Mr. Kaufman mentioned. Uh, we actually, myself and our Chief Operating Officer, Patrick Wiltshire, met with uh, Chris last Friday, and we talked to him about possible funds. We are monitoring that as far as the Department of Agriculture goes, um, and so we are going to keep our thumb on that and let Chris know as soon as something comes up, they announce the official procedure to get money through that. Um, there's, again, various different ones. There's, there's park grants available out there through Parks and Wildlife. There's trail grants, uh, both pedestrian and motorized uh, grants. There's uh, sidewalk grants through TxDOT at, at various times to, to repave and, and expand the sidewalks in cities to install pedestrian bridges. 
Um, and we, we've also worked with various cities through the years in different economic development uh, capacities. Uh, that's typically done, uh, again, as, as a consultant basis. And, and we talked to Chris briefly about that the other day. And, and as I understand, y'all currently don't have an economic development corporation. Uh, but we have worked with chambers uh, as well as city staff on any kind of interest that, that they might have on that. Um, I also have some brochures and cards that I'd love to leave with each of you. Uh, that way you can uh, look at us, uh, search us on the website. If you have any questions, you can certainly feel free to give me a call or email me. Uh, at this time, do any of the council members have a question about public management or the different types of work that we can work with the city on? Council, any questions for uh, Jake McAdams up there? Uh, my question would be planning and capacity infrastructure study. Is that, uh, you're saying that would be, would involve uh, an update to the comp plan? We've, we've been meeting as a committee to uh, move forward with our comp plan. Uh, so, Tell me a little bit more about what you would envision being in a planning and capacity study. Okay. Uh, again, there's various ways that we can go with that. Uh, if we go through this funding uh, program, there's actually about 15 different sub plans that the city could pursue. Uh, of course, we, we would recommend doing streets, drainage, sewage, and uh, uh, and, and water throughout the city. Um, but from there, it's, it's completely up to council. Um, very popular is a capital improvements plan uh, for the city of Granbury. I can see how a downtown uh, or, or even historic uh, center plan could be beneficial to you uh, for the future. Also park plans there's various thoroughfare plans that we could do. There's annexation plans and studies. There's zoning plans and studies that we could do if you want to uh, now or in the future uh, rezone or annex certain property. Uh, look at where you would like to locate industry. Uh, give you some ideas about that. Look at possible parcels that you could pursue in the future as well as we would do complete comprehensive uh, mapping on that. And so we would provide the city with update physical as well as digital copies of all the maps and, uh, and a very large binder of, of comprehensive plan narrative. So okay. what, what, what further well, are we, you interested in? Of course, in? We, have a, uh, we have a current Currently, we have a, a master plan for our city parks that we've recently done, and also a, a master plan for development of Lambert Branch Park. Uh, our comprehensive plan is somewhat dated and needs to be bought, bought forward because uh, we've recently annexed a fairly large swath of property. Uh, we need an update to our transportation. Uh, here's, here's what I'm going to ask or suggest. I know we're having a, a, a planning meeting, a meeting of that planning group, uh, something like June the 1st, I think is what the date that we set. Uh, I'm wondering if that wouldn't be best if you came to that meeting mm -hmm. and were introduced to the items that we've got on <coughs> our plan and that we've been talking about for the last five or six months and uh, present to us at that point in time and uh, then uh, see what we can go forward from there. I don't. Uh, I would defer to the manager because of uh, uh, the planning and capacity. I assume that's what you're talking about. Yes, sir. A comprehensive plan. All right. I would like to just clarify what what I envisioned uh, having the grant to do would be uh, inventory all of our existing infrastructure, water, sewer, uh, the size, what pipes are made of, uh, the capacities of those put those into a map and, and also analyze the need for which ones need to be replaced and, and ultimately create a master comprehensive imp, uh, capital improvement plan for water, sewer, streets. Um, I've used them before, at least folks before, to, to do a housing analysis and they inventory the houses inside your city and, and they can 
look at the condition of the different holistically tell you all the houses they actually tour the entire city and look at the quality of the house whether it's deteriorated the condition of the housing and you can get some good analysis that way and what I foresee is we could fold this data into the <coughs> comprehensive plan that that y'all are trying to achieve through the, your other pursuit uh, or supplement I mean, yeah the uh, if there are are there limits on how many times you can dip into the well or is there only one one uh, the one grant per city per annum or whatever I mean is there a potential that you could have a, a capacity planning and capacity infrastructure study at the same time that you were uh, funding up a comprehensive plan or could they be piggybacked on each other um, again it depends uh, we we would work with y'all's uh, other planning department and and committee this particular grant uh, through TDA only allows for one plan every 10 years funded through the grant uh, now we could coordinate the timing with y'all's uh, planning committee and planning department to identify exactly when the best time to apply uh, and, and seek funding through this program to incorporate as many or as few of the uh, planning criteria that you want. Now, having said that, there's absolutely nothing stopping the city that uh, if another five years after we do this plan, there's another large annexation that, that you undertake and the city decides to pursue an updated plan. Uh, at that time, uh, either public management can come in and apart from the grant, work with the city on updating the uh, uh, plan, the maps from there, or the city could find somebody else, do it in-house Although the grant only allows for cities to get grant funds once every 10 years, there's absolutely nothing stopping the city from updating that plan as often as you need to. Are there COG funds available or COG grants that would work in conjunction or not? Yes, sir. That's actually... it. So it's Department of Agriculture money, but it's funneled through the COGS. Um, <laughs> For this and so uh, we would be working with North Central Texas COG mm -hmm. uh, for this a as well as Department of Agriculture because the COG would do will do different types of programs they'll also do uh, pre-fund on these and where you pay the COG back over a period of time for the funds right most cities that go this route don't typically pursue those options however that is uh, certainly something that we can look into to help alleviate the cost or possibly get started sooner. Chris? Yeah, I would like to add that the maximum uh, amount this grant is good for is $55,000 and it, it would probably require us to have a 20% match and um, so you know I know that you know the cost of what the other comprehensive plans are so this is a this is a little less extensive than what we're talking about for the whole comprehensive plan. So in, in supporting this, it's, it's a, you said 55,000, so that's max plus our, plus our matching portion, or that includes yes. the match? Yes, no, we'd need to add 20% for our match. That. So we're talking about 65,000. Yeah. Uh, may I suggest then is that we uh, in, invite uh, Mr. McAdams and, and you to the next planning meeting and perhaps then we figure out a way to fold that into moving forward with a comprehensive plan. Uh, I, my personal opinion is we're in, we're in, we're really in need of updating our comprehensive plan. It's been 10 years basically since the plan has been looked at. Uh, we've grown substantially since then. Our infrastructure needs are phenomenal compared to what they were then so I would suggest that we we fold that into that I'm not opposed to moving forward with uh, approving the Mr. Adams looking at moving forward with this planning capacity make sure that we fold that into what we're looking for with what where were the plan of uh, the planning committee has moved so far in looking at that absolutely 
And Chris, you say you've worked with uh, Jake here? I've worked with public management. I just met Jake when I came to Granbury, so. I thought maybe he came from Sealy with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think that uh, he's worked in the in the region okay. here, and I dealt with the folks in the home office, so they've done us a good job. And they also, you know, we're doing that Texas Capital Fund program, okay. and I'm uh, the city I left was in the middle of one of those, and they were doing the administration, and like the other firm that we have engaged now. Good. Just another another tool for us to be able to use. Mayor, I got one question for, for Jake. Uh, Go ahead, you, Councilman Allen. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned ADC. Yes, sir. How, how does that work for y'all? Uh, again, there's various ways that, that we could do it. Um, many times, we typically work with cities that have an existing economic development corporation, uh, but they don't want to spend sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars a year on a director. And so we can come in at, at just a fraction of that and act as the director on an hourly uh, basis or, or, or on a percentage basis, depending on what all types of projects we do. Uh, we've also worked with cities before to do an economic development study outside of this plan. Uh, and, and that's been very beneficial to uh, numerous communities to help them, again, depending on what they need, tourism, uh, they, they want to find out what more the city uh, can do or the chamber or other local groups can do to help increase business or to help alleviate certain pressures. Um, and, and then we can always function as, as just an advisor to uh, whatever kind of economic development entity you have. Uh, we do have, uh, again, numerous years of experience throughout the state working with various different issues. And so if there's something that staff is kind of new to them, they haven't exactly seen this before, we've worked with cities to bring us on as advisors and, and let us comment, uh, provide some possible solutions and, and avenues to move forward from there. Is there any grant money to buy land? It depends what for. For industrial. Uh, yes, and and the Texas Capital Fund is actually going to be your best bet uh, to buy land. Now, y'all have kind of been through that. Y'all understand there are some uh, hitches to that. You do need uh, certain, uh, well, a business interest interested in that land first to go through the Texas Capital Fund. Now, there's also other uh, taxing structures that, that you can work with. TIFs is, is a popular one. Um, I, I'm also aware of, of various communities, depending on where you are, um, identifying, or, or, well, identifying a, a commercial district in that specific geographical district. They put a percentage of tax on there. Now, there are strings attached as to where you can use that money, but there are options available out there outside of grants that we can pursue to generate that capital to go out and buy the land. I'll take more questions for Jake. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Adams. Yes, sir. Thank y'all. And, and I'll leave some brochures with uh, Chris or Sherry so y'all can look at them. Thank okay. you. Thank you. At this time, I think we'll just uh, invite Mr. McAdams to uh, our next meeting. And our next item here that we have on the agenda, uh, our city manager, the new city manager, has uh, put this on the agenda. He's... Uh, worked with this in other cities stuff it's been pretty successful but it's it's actually a city manager information and operations report so Chris is uh, we sit down and talk about this and he's going to try to inform and keep the council informed on some of the things that are going on and and also the, uh, the citizens out there so some of the things that's going on out of the city manager's office so Chris I'm gonna lead this and let you uh, okay. take this one on thank you well, I've got a, some bulleted items of won't have to spend too much time on any of these, but I do want to bring them to your attention. Uh, obviously, the first one was the ex extension of the disaster declaration, which was done last Saturday. So, 
uh, at the time I wrote this agenda, we were still contemplating that. Uh, we do have a budget workshop calendar that's been distributed to you, and um, uh, I meant to have that date right here on the tip of my tongue, but anyway, be sure and mark your calendar for that, and we'll be meeting, that's in July 15th and 16th. Yeah, July 15th, 16th, and so we'll be working on that. Ava's been working feverishly with directors to get their uh, draft budgets, and we're compiling those, and we've got meetings next week, internal staff meetings, and working through that process to get it all ready for you guys to be able to take a shot at it and add to it, take away from it as you see fit. 15th and 16th? Yeah. Yes, sir. And then the next item, uh, as you may be aware, Atmos, Energy uh, had filed a rate inc increase request and the uh, rate review mechanism process is underway and they've uh, come to an agreement and at our next meeting we should have a resolution for you to consider to adopt and we'll get you the information with that. In our budget we budgeted to do a GIS mapping project and at this time staff has determined that we need those resources to be pulled towards the comprehensive plan project and by combining that those funds uh, I think we can get started on the comprehensive plan but we're still going to probably need some additional money for that and as we select a, a consultant to do that comprehensive plan we'll need to come up with additional money but we do propose to carry that GIS mapping project forward into the coming year instead of doing it this year and wanted to mention how we're kind of strategizing there. Uh, also behind the scenes, uh, staff's been working on a utility meter project. Uh, we're, we're looking at different ways to accomplish that. Our meters need to be replaced in the near future and we've met with consultants and we've got some more folks coming to talk to us and we're just working on that. Update on the Langton Park improvement. I wanted to share with you that I met with uh, Ava and Terry over at the Langton Park and uh, we've got some money earmarked um, in in the funds I don't know if they're appropriated yet but they're set aside for that Langton Park improvement some of its donated money and uh, some of the proposed items were new roofing and and siding on the uh, the building that's known as the small business development corporation building um, that siding would match the siding that was installed on the two-story historic home that's also the looks like an art center that we uh, that we currently maintain so uh, those we, we took individual bids one for siding and one for roofing and if you add them together it's over the fifty thousand dollar mark and so we decided to do a request for proposals so if you see an ad in the newspaper about that We'll be advertising that and then uh, we'll bring the, the final bids back to you. But apparently this project has been lacking for a while. But the siding itself on that, on that building is deteriorated in some places where you can actually see the insulation and the, the two before walls. And so it's in bad need of repair and painting and uh, some of the windows also to be replaced. So that's, that's what we've been working on. On the Lambert Branch Park, I've got, um, Aaron here to kind of help me with that. Uh, Aaron, would you step up and, if you would, kind of educate us on um, the project with those two houses that you're talking about. And they mentioned this in staff meeting and I thought we needed to get some attention uh, focused on that as we move forward to, to do what they're talking about doing. The park is being repurposed apparently and so need to talk about that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, just to kind of update on the on the two houses and, and both the houses we're referring to is the, the Wally House and the Walker House. Both those houses were donated to the city in 2008. Um, if, if we would move the homes, we could have the homes. So um, the city did move the houses to their current location at Lambert Branch Park. Um, over the years, there has been some, some work with Preserve Granberry. I believe they put some money in to having the houses leveled. Um, there's been a, a master plan done on Lambert Branch Park that did include some historic homes 
in that master plan. Uh, there were different options in that master plan for the use of the homes. But uh, over the past several years, there's really been nothing else done to the homes. Um, and we brought forth uh, some, some estimates last year on um, restoring those homes. And, and y'all may recall in, the, in last year's budget um, presentation, um, just to do on the Wally House, just to do exterior renovations was uh, over $144,000. And by exterior, that would be the roofing, siding, windows, and paint. And the Walker House, um, the same repairs to the Walker House was over 102,000. And that were, those were last year's numbers. Um, there has been an asbestos study done on the, on the homes. One of those two homes does um, have asbestos in it. And to have that asbestos removed from, from that house, it would be, uh, just, just for the removal is uh, $7,950. That's the one quote we've got. We've got some more competitive quotes um, coming in to us now. And they recommend, the state recommends, even though it's not required, they recommend the uh, air monitoring just for, um, in case you have any people, any residents come up and, you know, claim they, as a way this guy worded it, they smell asbestos. You know, you can't smell asbestos, but the, the state said it's just best to do that air study while these, uh, this house is being abated just to make, to make certain. Um, Parks Board asked, voted some time back for, uh, for city staff to look at, at what we need to do to, to get rid of the homes. Um, we did have some preserved Granberry members in one of the parks board meetings and it, it became clear that they don't intend to put any funds into the res restoration of those homes. It would be solely on the city to do so. So my next step after the parks board meeting was uh, just to research the homes, see what had been done, what it would cost to, to do the homes. And I did meet with um, I met with the Historic Preservation Commission at their last meeting, and they did agree to let city staff um, get rid of the homes. First, they want us to try to auction them off. Um, if they do not sell an auction, they did grant us permission to have them demolished and removed. They would like us to go through the homes and maybe before they're demolished, remove anything that could be of value, like one, the one home has some stained glass windows you know, remove anything that's obvious. One of them has a nice fireplace mantle in it that's still in good shape. Um, but, but that's, we're bringing this to you today just to kind of update you on what we've been researching and what we've been, you know, trying to get done on the homes. Really, what, what's, what's driving this is, besides the homes being very unsightly and unsafe um, against our own ordinance as far as the condition they're in, um, the hike and bike trail is being put right by, by that park. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a grand opening eventually on that bridge. And we don't want those houses being what the citizens are looking at. And we do want to move forward with the development of that Lambert Branch Park after we get this bridge complete. Um, but it's, of course, up to, you know, we, we, we brought the, the figures to you in the past to restore those homes. We, we just don't see that it's going to be doable. I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any on the, on the two homes. And I might add that Parks Board would like to, to keep the one building to the far north. That's the uh, Crockett News building. Um, they would like to keep that one and perhaps restore it in, in the near future. Of course, the restoration cost on that were, was the least of the three. Um, it does as well contain asbestos. But the asbestos removal for that building was, uh, I believe, two thousand dollars. So uh, that's the directions I've been given by both the Parks Board and the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. Mayor. Hey. Councilman Couch, um, Aaron, would you would you clarify again um, the um, preserved Granberry? You did you did say they spent some money on those. 
they, uh, I believe it was, I believe it was fourteen thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken, that was put towards the leveling of those homes. And have you have you talked to any of the of those members in reference to this? Not since our, uh, not since some of them were in the parks board meeting. No. So, so there were there were people on the parks. There there were some mem there were some served Granbury members at the at the parks board. And they weren't opposed to that, to the. Pardon me. They were not opposed. Um. I wouldn't, I'm not going to say they were. They want us to. They, they would re, want to see us spend the money and restore the homes. That's what right. they want to see us do. Okay. Now, Council, any more questions for Aaron? Thank you, Aaron. The next item I wanted to just cover is our first home and garden show at the Grand Bay Resort Convention Center is May 30th and 31st, and uh, be sure and. Mark that on your calendar to be able to go there. Uh, summer concerts on the square series began um, May 16th and will continue uh, for three more months, I believe, mm -hmm. on the third Saturday. And uh, the, the swimming pool, I've got it all spelled out, but the swimming pool opens Memorial Day weekend for the weekend, and then it'll close during the week, and then it'll open full time the next week for the summer. So, uh, and the last item that's not on here, I wanted to remind everybody of the Mo Memorial Day event uh, that's going on this Saturday and Sunday on the on the square, and then actually on Monday there's a commemoration of Memorial Day service that I would encourage everybody to be a part of. And that's all I've got, and just wanted to kind of bring y'all up to date on some of these things going on. I like to try to do this like once a month on the agenda, so it's formally out there, and not only y'all hear about it, but citizens have a chance as well. Thank you, Chris. Also, Council, we've added an item down down there. You probably see this ongoing. Is the uh, uh, we'll ask for City Council comments, but we'll also we'll look for future agenda items. And what this is is if there are agenda items or you've got some items that uh, possibly are going to go on the agenda, uh, we can we can uh, recognize those at the end of the Council meeting so that uh, our City Manager has an opportunity to do some research, and we uh, we can go forward with uh, getting some of those things. Uh, researched in a pretty timely manner so uh, if, if any of you guys have any of those today I'll uh, entertain Mayor, those I, Councilman Allen uh, uh, go ahead or count uh, Chris um, is, is there any time limit on the charter review for us to go over that and look at that I think that's future agenda item so uh, I think your a presentation was made to you before I was yes here uh -huh. and so I think there still needs to be that on your agenda at the future right. to declare that for an election, whatever you want. To put I on. think I think Stuart got the the next step in that is to actually call the election. So the answer to your question is yeah, the timeline is like sometime in August because you have to call the formal election. We're waiting on the elections administrator at the county to get us the the precinct locations so that we can call the election and put that in the ordinance because you have to have those locations in the ordinance. Okay, but for us to review them. We usually have a workshop or or during the council we, we go, can certainly we set have a that. workshop if that's what the council wants to do but the next step is to adopt that ordinance okay and so well, only thing i'm asking is that mm -hmm. i'm going to be gone the last meeting of next month i'll be here on the first i'd love for i'd love to be here when that's discussed i think all the council should be here sure that's and we can and you know, we can certainly do a workshop if that's what the council wants to do yeah. that's not a problem Councilman Parson, you had something? Uh, my concern is Open Meeting Act. Uh, the city manager's information was detailed out and listed, and I don't see potential problem with that. But uh, for us to have open comments and talking about agenda items, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to defer to the attorney, but uh, my understanding is that uh, an open discussion like that might be in violation of the Open Meetings Act. I don't think you have a violation if you're only discussing putting things on future agendas. That's that's perfectly fine. You just can't discuss in detail what those agenda items are, take votes and things like that on, on what those agenda items may be. But if you're talking about putting something on a future agenda to discuss, that's that's perfectly acceptable. Kind of as we as we done.
just moments ago with the uh, with the uh, the charter. You know, so if there's items there that you'd like to, after we've discussed, would like to see it on a future agenda, we'd just like to make note of it so we can prep. And, and it may not even show up on the agenda, but it's items that the city manager can at least get prepared for. We can still put it on our one-on-one yes. on one if we yes. want to. Yes, yes, yes. Nothing's changed there. <laughs> yes. Council, any more discussion? If not, I'll now declare that the Granbury City Council is convened in the open session and all our members are present and the City Council will now go into closed session pursuant to the provisions of the Texas Government Code in accordance with the authority contained in the following section, section 551.071, consultation with the attorney on, yeah, consultation with the attorney on item number three. The council at this time is now reconvened into a open session. There was no action taken in executive session. Council, are there any other comments? If not, the council meeting is adjourned. <laughs>